We follow the order of Matins on LSB 219. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Invite the congregation to stand, and now we turn to page 219. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be for ever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in His hand. The strength of the hills is His also. 
The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit,
the congregation may be seated, we turn to hymn 345. I invite the congregation to be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is taken from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. 
Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle for the second Sunday in Advent is taken from St. Peter's second general epistle, chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, 
And then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. O Lord, have mercy on us. Invite the congregation to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I have the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and, and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The congregation may be seated. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace, from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is our Old Testament reading for today. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up, To a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is our text. When Isaiah wrote the words of our text, he was looking forward a hundred or more years into the future when his nation would be in captivity. The people would be very far away from home. A day when foreign alien armies, the Babylonian army, would come to Judah and destroy the temple and carry off the people into exile. He saw a day when the people would lose hope, even as the psalmist says, by the rivers of Babylon we hung up our lyres and our captors required of us a song. Freedom and home were 1,700 miles away for them. And of course, there was perhaps no hope for them to return and be free in the Lord. The text says, a voice cries, or voice says, cry, and I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades The great tragedy was that God's people had brought all of this on themselves because they had turned away from their God. They had made a promise with Moses in the wilderness that they would obey everything that God had told them. And the promise was in that covenant that God would be their God and they would be his people. But in a monstrous ways they turned against him 
They perverted everything that God had done for them. They worshipped other gods. But most importantly, they closed their ears to the words of the prophets that came to them time and time again, calling them to repentance. Jeremiah, who was called the weeping prophet, said, Do not trust in these words saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Much like John the Baptist even say, don't say that you are children of Abraham. God is able from these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. The people, of course, trusted in foreign nations. You know, there's always a temptation of turning the kingdom of grace into the kingdom of power by trusting in political power or political power. Futures. I remember one time uh, when I was in the senior college in Fort Wayne before, of course, it became the uh, Fort Wayne Seminary, or they moved the seminary from Springfield to Fort Wayne, that w- the professor that was so, uh, such a, a very highly respected man, Dr. Bernard Anderson, was one that said the thing with reading the Old Testament is that we have to have a proper concept of political justice and a political way of life has absolutely nothing to do with that. The people, of course, at the time of Isaiah trusted in Egypt or they trusted in Assyria instead of trusting in the Lord who was their true strength and their comfort. They wound up in captivity. Imagine, let's us, let us all imagine ourselves in our beautiful and and God-blessed nation to be conquered and to taken captive to a foreign land. How would we feel? In a sense, we would give up all hope, as perhaps many of the people of Judah felt as they were taken into captivity and kept there for 70 years. There was the prospect of never returning. Of course, so some of them continued to live there. But... If you read the book of Daniel, it it is encouraging, as Daniel said, is because of our sins that we have done this. Oftentimes that that's all that people can understand is is God's judgment and God's uh, abandoning them in in the manner in which he showed that he abandoned his people to captivity. The grass withers, the flower fades When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The people, as I said, were far from home to remind them that their sins had made a separation between them and their God. We can be a million miles away from the Lord, but if we are with Him in faith, then He is nearer to us than we are to ourselves. And yet there is the promise of forgiveness when the Holy Spirit works through the law of God and brings people to repentance. And you have these astounding words of the prophet Isaiah, Go up into the high mountain, O Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Say to the cities, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Of course, the coming was the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even as the prophet says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It was John the Baptist's purpose to be the forerunner of the Messiah. He was to prepare people. We are, by God's grace and power, prepared to trust and believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, who comes to us with God's mercy. You know, there's a rather interesting phrase in in our text where it says that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. What does that mean? You might think that the idea is that they'd suffered enough. They'd suffered twice as much of the time that they must suffer for their sins. 
But that's not what that means. Of course, it is in the way of the law to uh, measure things in that manner. But what it means is what they had before and what they lost will be doubled when God comes to them with his love and mercy. Even as the Lord Jesus says that those who leave this life for the life to come will receive much more in the life to come. There is much more forgiveness with God than there is judgment because judgment is not what God wills to do. It is, as Scripture says, an alien work to him. His delight is to show mercy and love and forgiveness. His anger is for a moment, but his love is forever. Weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. For the Lord Jesus himself comes and righteously reveals himself as God's chosen one to bear our sins. That's why those, like the preachers that get up into the pulpit, or, or like you when you share good news with those who need to hear the good news that their sins are forgiven, that you would point them to Jesus to say, Behold your God. Behold your God who comes to you tenderly, lovingly as a shepherd to go and seek out and find the lost ones, that goes out to care for those who are with young or those who are injured. He is the one that ministers to them the healing balm, the oil, and the love and mercy that he has for them. So that, of course, is the comfort that we have as God's people, prepared by the Spirit through the law to repent of our sins. But then the Spirit empowers us to trust in Jesus and to tell the entire world the good news that our God has come to us, has appeared to us. All of us, of course, are heralds of good news. Because Jesus, of course, as the good shepherd, the one who loves sinners, is the one who calls us to himself. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. To the paralytic, he said, your sins are forgiven. To the Samaritan leper, among the ten that were healed by Jesus, your faith has made you well. To the tax collector, the chief tax collector Zacchaeus of Jericho, Jesus said, now salvation has come to this house, for he too is a son of Abraham, a member of God's eternal family. And so Advent, of course, is about preparing ourselves by God's grace through the law and the gospel that comes to us. And we are guided and directed by the Lord to worship at his manger at his cross, and at his empty tomb. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. I now invite the congregation to stand as we sing the Benedictus. 226.
we ask that the ushers now would bring forward the offerings. Let us pray. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray, Lord Jesus, you are the great physician. Give ear to our prayers for Pastor William Orr of our sister congregation, Hope Lutheran Church in St. Anne, who has contracted COVID. We ask that you would grant him healing as well as to those members of our congregation that we name before you. Dale, Nancy, Perry, Joyce, Ed, Michael, Michael, Andrea, Sarah, Celia, Anne, Robin, Tom, Bernadette, Cindy, George, Bonnie, Jane, Stefan, Doug, Ruth Ann, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Sharon, Ron, Ruth Ann, Ruth, Mel, Sharon, Dan, and Billy. We thank and praise you that last Sunday you have granted that the granddaughter of our sister in Christ, Nancy Marilla, Maya, has given birth to a baby son, Thomas Andrew. We ask that you would bless mother and child as they recover from their peril and pain and grant that the child may be brought speedily to holy baptism. Be with those who are in need of your gracious help and grant them your mercy and your healing. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The congregation will be seated as we turn to 515. Good morning to all of you, especially our visitors. We want to extend to you our great uh, welcome and, and also our joy that you were able to be with us today. We hope that you will make a record of your attendance here by uh, entering your name in the uh, attendance book at the aisle side of the pew. Also, the um, red guest register that's in our narthex, ask the ushers where that is. Also, our members, if you haven't registered online, please uh, enter your names in the uh, books or the, on the forms that are provided for uh, a re recording of attendance. Uh, we um, invite you all to come across the street to the Fellowship Hall for our Bible study. Uh, we're continuing to look at Moses, and it should be very exciting. Tomorrow is our voters' meeting at 7 p.m., so we encourage all voters to be here uh, in the fellowship hall for our voters' assembly. Wednesday is a very big day, of course. Uh, the um, adult handbell rehearsal at 6 p.m., then our second midweek Advent service at 7, 
and then our choir will meet at 745. So may the Lord bless you this week, and thank you for your love and peace in Christ.